previous part of this video we looked at sculpting up a bust which served as the basis for a silicon statue of a steampunk astronaut that I made for an event in Leicester. In this part of the video we're going to be looking at making a mould of the piece in plaster and then casting up the piece in dragon skin which is a type of silicon rubber. So I've screwed my mannequin to a piece of wood here to hold it in place and what I'm now doing is creating a wall around the edge of the sculpture using foam board and then I'm filling in the gaps with some water-based clay. This wall lies where the two halves of the mould are going to separate so it's important to get the edges of the clay up against your sculpture as closely as possible. I've used a paintbrush to smooth all this down so there's no um, gaps between the wall and the sculpture. And one thing I am doing before I start putting a plaster over this is to add some Vaseline to the eyes. I don't think the eyes are going to stick to the plaster or get damaged in any way, but um, just in case I want to use that as a, as a mould release effectively to stop that happening. So now just mixing up some plaster and I'm using Prestia casting plaster which is a, quite a hard plaster so it's ideal for making a mould. Now as this first layer is going to be picking up all the detail, I'm going to be applying it very, very carefully. So I've made the plaster a lot thinner than I ordinarily would, and that's just so it can flow over the sculpture and flow into all of the detail and pick up all of the details in the sculpture. So it's really just a process of slowly applying it, brushing it on very carefully, making sure I get it into all of the nooks and crannies of the sculpture. And it's just a case of really reapplying it until it sets fast. So the plaster got a lot thicker here and as you can see it's uh, not flowing as fast as it was before so it's getting close to going off so I'm just taking the opportunity to put additional layers on um, to uh, build it up and make sure there are no air bubbles. So I've now mixed up a second batch of plaster here but now I've made it very very thick so instead of it flowing across the sculpture this is more structural so I'm literally just pasting it on to build up the structural strength of the mould. So it's now time to start thinking about some additional strength and what I'm going to be doing here is mixing in some glass fibre mat. Now this is the same stuff you may have seen me previously use for fiberglass. When you're making fiberglass, so basically it's a polyester resin which is mixed with the glass fibre. Polyester resin on its own is quite brittle and will fracture quite easily, but if you mix the chop strand mat into the resin, it will become very, very hard because the, the fibres will stop it breaking. Now the same thing is true for plaster, so what I'm doing is to mix in the glass fibre mesh in the plaster, and it's going to add additional strength to stop the plaster fracturing. Now that's important for when we actually come to crack the mould open. The last thing you want to do is get a chisel between the two halves of the mould, crack it open and have the mould fracture along the middle of the uh, face or something like that, it'd be quite disastrous, difficult to repair, so adding all this stuff in just makes it really really strong and makes sure that that won't happen. Now what I've done here is to raise some sections across the mould. What I'm going to be doing next is adding a layer of hessian. So in much the same way that I've added the glass fibre, the hessian um, performs a similar job, it's just a bit bigger and thicker. So I've just raised these areas so the layers of plaster will stick together. So here's my hessian, it's otherwise known as plasterous scrim I think and it works in the same way as a glass fibre, you just mix it in with the plaster and it adds some structural strength to it. Right, so the first half of the mould has now dried and I've flipped it over and removed the foam board and the clay. So as you can see I've got a nice smooth divide between the two halves of my mould. To make sure that the two layers of plaster don't stick together, I'm adding a layer of Vaseline along the edge here. What you can also see sticking out here is some pieces of wood. I've embedded these in the plaster and that's just going to allow me to screw the two halves of the mould together once I've got it finished. So it's the same process for the other half of the mould. Uh, because on this occasion there's only a small amount of actual sculpted detail, the back of the ears um, and a little bit of the neck, I'm not doing a detail layer in the same way that I did for the first half of the mould. So I'm just going straight in with the chop strand mat and adding that straight away. As you can also see I've got a piece of wood on the back of the head. That's screwed directly into the back of the head of the mannequin. That's there just so I can accurately line up the halves of the mould when I come to put them back together. So there's my finished mould. As you can see I've got some pieces of wood on the other side of the mould as well and I've screwed them into the pieces on the front so the two halves are joined together quite nicely. 
Now this may seem a bit overkill, I mean I've put basically an entire tub of plaster on this. Um, as I mentioned before though, it's just to make sure that the mould doesn't break when you crack it open. So I'm taking the screws out now and I'm going to crack the mould open. And I'm just using a chisel to um, get between the two halves of the mould and to leave them open. Uh, because I've made them quite strong they can take that degree of force. So this is why I went to such trouble to make sure the mould was nice and strong in the first place. There's the back of my mould um, looking pretty clean and I'm just pulling out the mannequin's head. Luckily because that's smooth it's come out pretty easily so that's, uh, that's handy. So now it just remains for me to pull out all of the Chavant that's in the inside of the mould. Now luckily because Chavant is a oil based clay and the plaster is water based you should find that they don't stick together. So as you can see the clay is coming out pretty cleanly uh, which is nice because it means you don't actually have to clean the inside of your mould. I have made moulds from fibreglass previously from Chavant sculptures and it's a bit of a pain because the Chavant sticks to the fibreglass so you spend hours and hours trying to clean out your mould ready for casting and if you scrub it too hard you can destroy some of the detail so I find that this works really really well if you are making silicon sculptures because the mould is basically ready to use straight away, no cleanup required so that's pretty handy. Right, so there's my mould um, looking pretty clean and um, it's come out well I think. I can't see any uh, obvious air bubbles or defections. Um, actually, having said that, there is one in the ear but that's easily filled in with a bit of Chavant clay so that's, uh, that's not a problem. So the next thing I need to worry about is the eyes. Now obviously when I pour the silicon in I need to leave a cavity for the eyes in the mould otherwise it will just be a solid block of silicon and I won't be able to put my eyes in. Now I can't use these eyes because I need to actually screw them in so what I'm going to do is make a copy of the eyes. So now I could use silicon to do that uh, but this is just going to be a one piece throwaway mould. So what I'm going to use to do this is something called alginate which uh, you may be familiar with. It's uh, often used for life casts so if you wanted to make a cast of someone's face or hands or any other body part really and um, this stuff's great for that. Um, it's a water based uh, powder basically you just mix it with water and it sets very very quickly you're sort of talking about two or three minutes something like that. Um, however it's also pretty cheap it's cheaper than silicon uh, so it's pretty good for just one off simple moulds like this so I think this is going to be ideal just for making some quick plaster copies of these eyes. As I said it does set very very quickly so this is literally five minutes later and it's set um, it's nice and spongy there we go that's come away quite cleanly um, as you can see there's a few air bubbles in there but that's not a problem really I can sand those away pretty easily so now I'm just mixing up some plaster and pouring that into the mould. That's now set and there's my eyes. So as you can see they're now going to sit in the mould like that. The silicon is going to flow around them and they're going to leave a cavity in the silicon that I can put the real eyes in once I'm done. Now in order to secure that in I'm just going to drill from the front through and put a screw in. Uh, and that's what we've got here. So the mould is now ready to use. So I'm going to be casting this piece up in dragon skin which is a type of platinum based silicon made by a company called Smoothon. There are lots of different types of silicon but the main two that I've used are tin based silicon and platinum based silicon. My experience has been that tin based silicon is generally a bit less long living than platinum silicon. I've made some puppets in the past and you can see a few here uh, from tin based silicon and I have found that after a few months they start getting a bit oily and a bit slimy. A few guys from Smooth on that I met at an event a few um, years back told me that the platinum silicons don't leach oils in the same way that the tin based silicons do. My understanding is that tin based silicon is often used for prosthetic makeup whereas platinum silicon is more often used for things that need to last a little bit longer so perhaps moulds or fake body parts or severed heads things like that. So I'm going to be using platinum based silicon here because I want this piece to last. Uh, what I've also got is some pigment so I've got some flesh coloured pigment to tint the uh, silicon to the correct colour. I've also got a fixed tropic agent um, called Thivex. Now 
Fixotropic is, I don't know why they use that word, it's just a complicated way of saying a thickening agent. You can buy Fixotropic pastes for resins and for other materials as well. So basically the silicon will flow and pour in its normal state, but you can turn it into a sort of a putty type consistency if you add the thickener to it. Now that's handy if you're doing sort of brush in molds like this, because it means that the um, silicon will stay where you put it rather than flowing around. So I'm going to be using a few different methods for doing that, but you'll see as we go on. So the first thing I'm going to do is to pour some of the part A into a large bowl here. Now what I'm going to be doing is doing a few different um, applications of the silicon into the mold. So I'm going to do one batch which I'm going to roll around in, on the inside of the mold to, to make sure that the silicon gets into all of the details of the mold. Once that's halfway drying, I'm then going to add some thickened silicon to fill in the remainder effectively. And for that, I'm going to thicken it up with the 5X and then just brush it in. Now, because I'm doing several different applications, I don't want the color of the silicon to vary. If I were to put the pigment in once for the first batch and then again for the next batch, I couldn't guarantee that I could get exactly the same color again. And that could lead to the final cast looking a bit weird. So what I'm gonna do is mix up a big batch of part A and then just use that same batch for each of the mixes going forward. That way I should get the same color each time. Now this is only the part A, so what I'm now going to do is decant some of this into a separate mixing container, get some of the part B, mix them together, and then start adding that to the mould. So I'm now mixing that together and um, Dragon Skin has the same problem with other silicons that I've mentioned previously wherein when you mix them together you add a load of air into the mix. So what I'm doing is putting it in the vacuum chamber and just sucking the air out so there are no air bubbles in the mix. You may notice that this has come out of the vacuum chamber in a larger container than what it went in in. That's just because um, when the air is pulled out of the silicon, it has a tendency to bubble up um, and the container that it was in just wasn't big enough to contain that as it expanded, so I had to swap over to a large one. So as you can see, I'm just pouring the silicon into the mold and I'm rotating the mold and letting the silicon flow over the inside. That's just to make sure that all of the detail of the mold is picked up and that there are no air bubbles. And it's really just a question of continuing to do that until the rubber starts setting. Now I chose Dragon Skin 10 Medium, which has a 20 minute pot life. Um, however, it actually took a lot longer to start setting than 20 minutes. So I think if I were to do this again, I might go for a quicker one. They do a fast version, which has a pot life of about eight minutes and a demold time of about 75 minutes. So that might actually be better for this, uh, this method. But nevertheless, it's worked well enough. So what I'm now doing is mixing up another batch using the same part A that I tinted before. However, this time I'm adding in some 5X solution as I mix the rubber. So I don't know if you can see, this is beginning to drip a little bit slower than it previously did. You only need a little bit of it, but as you can see here, I've more or less got to a stage now where it's not flowing at all and it's more like a jelly. So now I've got that ready, I'm now pasting that into the mold. Now this is slightly more tricky because there is a possibility of getting air bubbles in the uh, cast. So I'm just taking extra care to make sure I push the silicon into all of the details of the mold that haven't already been got by the previous batch that I've put in. So unfortunately the battery in my camera died, um, so I've skipped forward slightly. As you can see, I've put the mannequin head into the mold now, and also got the back half of the mold on, and that's all screwed in place. So you can see that some of the silicon has squirted out of the edges, but I've got the mold fully closed. Um, so now it's just a case of leaving it overnight and letting the rubber set. So as you can see, I've taken the back of the mold off and things are looking good so far. Um, now, because there's a bit of suction between the mannequin and the silicon, I've had to employ a um, chisel here in the top of the head just to lever it all out. But once the suction's broken, it actually came out pretty easily. So on inspection, it's looking pretty good. I don't think you can see any too many air bubbles, so that's good. And as you can see, some of the silicon's got down between the gap between the head and the neck, but um, that's fine, I can just chop that off. Now I've unscrewed the bolts from the eyes here, and this has come out pretty easily. Um, I was slightly worried that it might 
stick to the plaster because plaster is after all a um, porous material but that's come out really easily and um, it doesn't look like there's any air bubbles there at all so that's that's good news now, the cast does require a bit of cleanup of course so I'm cutting away the flashing around the edges of the mold here there's also a degree of flashing around the edges of the eye as well so I'm just paying particular attention here to try and get straight lines so it doesn't look unnatural there's one of the eyes in place um, I think that eyelid needs a little bit more clean up there because there's a bit of a gap but that looks kind of cool so um, as I mentioned I've had to cut away some of the flashing on the edges and that has left some jagged edges in certain places so what I've done here is to mix up another batch of silicon and that's thickened again with 5x and I'm just putting that over the seam lines of the cast so what I'm now going to do is use a paintbrush which has been dipped in white spirit which is otherwise known as mineral spirits if you're not in the UK and I'm just using that to smooth it down and effectively to sculpt in um, a nice smooth edge so it doesn't look unnatural and it hides the lines from the mold. So there's my re-sculpted ear and neck and they're not looking too bad I think. Uh, nice and smooth anyway, not a jagged line so that's good. So that's it for this part of the video. In the next video I'll be looking at painting up the piece and punching in some hair and finishing off the final costume. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be posting more videos on this project and others, so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on, please do subscribe. Alternatively, you can visit my website, which is www.thedarkpower.com, or you can find me on Facebook, just search for The Dark Power.